In the original Dragon's Dogma, Magic Archer was one of the most broken vocations in the game, and while DD2 slightly nerfed this class by taking away their offhand daggers, I'm happy to report that Magic Archer is still incredibly cracked. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your Magic Archer for insane damage. We'll go over the best abilities, augments, and gear you need to bring this build together. I'll also show you how to unlock Magic Archer in case you haven't found the vocation yet. With this build, you'll be tearing through all manner of dragons, griffins, and more with ease and style. So let's start off with the best abilities in the kit. By far the best ability of Magic Archer is Ricochet Hunter. This charge shot sends out a stream of magic arrows that bounce off any available surface, dealing damage all the way. One fully charged Ricochet Hunter can cleave an entire HP bar off a dragon, even without fully upgraded gear or other magical buffs. The catch is you need to have something to bounce the bolts off of, so it's kind of useless in the open world unless you're in a ravine or next to a rock wall. Sagittate Avalanche summons a volley of magical arrows that rain down on a target. It's not overpowered, but does respectable damage for the speed and stamina cost. Flamefang Arrow allows you to shoot a flaming arrow that you can control mid-air. Kinda reminds me of one of the Hunter abilities in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Arctic Bolt shoots a giant block of ice at an enemy that explodes on impact. Again, no crazy damage here, but it's good as like a regular ability that you would use on basic enemies or just to take a small chunk out of mini-bosses. Candescent Orb is a decent early game ability that deals fire damage over time, great for taking down griffins in particular. Frost Hunter Bolt is decent against standard enemies, especially if they're weak to ice, but it takes a lot of stamina and doesn't deal that much damage compared to other abilities. Most of these abilities are just fine, but the real thing that makes Magic Archer overpowered is the master ability Martyr Bolt. In exchange for some of your HP, Martyr Bolt creates a giant rain of arrows that have the potential for massive damage, especially if you pre-buff with Savagery Extract. For instance, the YouTuber Synthetic Man was able to take off about 90% of the final boss's HP with this attack. Again, because it saps your HP, this isn't something you want to use in every situation, but it is sort of like a Hail Mary, Big Dick Damage kind of deal. Magic Archer also has a handful of defensive abilities, making it a more well-rounded class instead of only offering straight damage. Recovery Arrow allows you to revive pawns from a distance, and Bartizan allows you to create a magical shield around an ally, also from a distance. For Magic Archer Augments, your best choices are Sustainment and Veracity. Sustainment boosts defenses for your pawns, which is great because you'll want them tanking and distracting enemies while you rain down hell from afar. Veracity regenerates stamina whenever you score a kill, which is nice because Magic Archer is a stamina costly class. To boost your damage, you may also want to dip into the Sorcerer vocation and pick up the Sagacity Augment. This boosts your damage, but requires a very high investment in Sorcerer to unlock it. So if you're not interested in grinding Sork levels, you can skip this Augment. Now we're going to go over how to unlock Magic Archer and the Master ability in one shot. If you've already done this, feel free to skip to this timestamp for best gear options. In order to unlock Magic Archer, you'll need to make your way through Batal into the Volcanic Islands, which is a relatively late game area. South of the Batali capital, you'll find a cave named Drabnir's Grotto. Proceed through this cave to the exit on the other side, and you'll meet an angry dwarf with a bad back. Give him some healing herbs, then take him home, where you'll get another quest to escort him to the Volcanic Islands Hot Spring. This next part is kind of a pain in the ass, as you need to lead him through a heavily guarded area with multiple mini-bosses and mobs. All the while, he'll ask you to slow down or stop periodically if you're going too fast. My suggestion is to pick him up and haul him yourself to save this from happening, and just run by all the enemies. It's also best to rest and make sure you're doing this during the daytime because night brings out stronger enemies who could potentially kill the dwarf. God, I hate this quest. Eventually, you'll reach the volcanic island camp. Head up the ladders in the far side of town to reach the hot springs. And at the end of your journey, the dwarf's wife will arrive and give you the magic archer vocation. She should also give you the master ability at this point as well, but if this doesn't happen, be sure to raise her affinity through gifts. You can also unlock the Warfare vocation in this spot by speaking to the bummy dude on the ground and giving him three newt liqueur. But that's a story for another video. The best bow option for magic archers is the Dragon's Breath. You can pick this up at the Volcanic Island Camp Armory. 
This is perfect, too, because it's the same place where you escort the dwarf to the hot springs. So you can unlock the vocation, get the master ability, and get the best bow for this class, all in the same place at the same time. You can also buy the best armor for Magic Archer and every other vocation really at this place as well. The best helm option for Magic Archer is Confidant's Hood, but sadly I ran out of gold before I could buy it myself. Same goes for the best armor set, the Eonian Coat. In the post game, you'll have access to some better weapons like the Grind Mar and Blackwing Bow. Now that we've brought this whole build together, let's take a look at some Magic Archer gameplay so you can get a feel for the class. You've caught the open attention, Master. Try to keep it off. I shan't squander the. So yeah, the Magic Archer is still incredibly powerful in Dragon's Dogma 2. There are some drawbacks to this class though. For starters, you have no defensive maneuvers, so that means no parries, no blocks, and no dodges. So if enemies get the drop on you, you're gonna have a bad time. Second, the basic attack for Magic Archer is super super weak compared to other classes. Third, the stamina consumption is very high for this vocation. But when you lean into the strengths of Magic Archer, you can deal some of the highest damage possible in Dragon's Dogma 2. So there you have it, how to unlock and build the Magic Archer for insane damage in Dragon's Dogma 2. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Dragon's Dogma and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.